SEC Network Women's Basketball presented by Regents. Tonight, the number one team in the country, the South Carolina Gamecocks, at home at Colonial Life Arena. Welcoming in the Alabama Crimson Tide. It's game two of a triple header on the SEC Network. Let's take a look at the conference standings right now. A dead heat at the top with South Carolina and Tennessee both at 8-1 and one in the league. Got a bunch of NCAA tournament teams that are going to be coming from the SEC. Look at the bottom half. That's where you find Alabama at 2-7 and seven on the season in league play. And with that, we welcome you to SEC Women's College Basketball on this Thursday night. Alongside Brooke Weisbrod, I'm Richard Cross. And, Brooke, you look at this South Carolina team. So many times great teams are driven by offense. But South Carolina, this is a team that's driven by defense. And in January, the teams have paid the price. Let me tell you, no team is scoring much more than 50 points a game against the Gamecocks in January. You already know they lead the nation in block shots. So if you come inside, you're going to be met, met with a lot of resistance because a lot of Aliyah Boston who averages about four blocks a game. They're always up in the lanes. The guards are quick. They anticipate. Richard, basically, they're a nightmare to play on defense. You look at the national categories, you mentioned the blocks, 173 total on the season and the rebounding margin just off the charts. Let's take a peek at Alabama. Hard to talk about this Alabama team without starting with Brittany Davis, who's been consistent all season long. Yeah, she's a top five scorer in the league, just you know coming off an off game against Mizzou. But you see the season numbers, and she's averaging career highs pretty much everywhere. She took that year off. She had a beautiful baby girl. She's out here being a mom, playing Division One college basketball, and according to Coach Curry, in the best shape of her life. So sandstorm inside Colonial Life Arena. What are we watching for tonight? Well, of course, we are watching for Aaliyah Boston, who is a National Player of the Year candidate, 14 straight double-doubles. That's an all-time record at South Carolina. For Alabama, Hannah Barber, 31 straight games where she has made one from deep. Alabama lost to Missouri on Sunday, but Brooke, they jumped out to a fast start. They made three of four from behind the arc. Feels like if Alabama's gonna have a chance tonight, they're really gonna have to be aggressive. They have to do that, right? You have to basically punch first on offense. They're not afraid to shoot the three to start. And they help open up some inside. They're going to have to deal with that all night long. Size-wise, they have no answer for Aaliyah Boston, the best player in the country. Aaliyah Boston made that one look easy. Here's the starting lineup for Alabama. We'll keep an eye on Megan Abrams, second on the team in scoring 13 points a game. And, of course, Brittany Davis leading Alabama with 16 per contest. A little curl down the right side of the lane and a bucket for Bama. See the starting five for South Carolina. Zaya Cook, who's been so good throughout the year. And fast starts have been nothing new for this South Carolina team. Not only the offensive end, but locking opponents down defensively. Yeah, they've managed to get out to extremely quick starts. Just be really in tune and to have the experience that they have on the floor. That's what's gotten to them at this point. You can start games and put you away in a hurry. Barber, open look, lets it fly, can't get it to go, and South Carolina this time secures the rebound. South Carolina from deep. How about rattling one home? Zaya Cook with the triple. She hits 26% from behind the arc, but she made the three there. Okay, I love that Zaya Cook has started off this game two for two because her last three, she's gone five of 22 from three. So this, is this, this is the hot start you're talking about, yeah. You got to have a TO. South Carolina is 100 miles an hour from the get go. Brooke, if you like two of two to start the game, how about three of three to start the game for Zaya Cook and put a steal in the category as well? South Carolina off and running right out of the gate in Columbia. Early 9-2 lead for South Carolina over Alabama. South Carolina 20-1 and one on the season, a fast start. It's been good for Zaya Cook. But, Brooke, on the opening possession of the game, South Carolina said, we're going to our star. And they immediately got it down low to Aaliyah Boston. And it's been so much fun to watch the progression of her career, her footwork get better, her outside shooting get better, just her court awareness. Uh, she moves incredibly well you see now stepping out to the three regularly knocking down shots and what she's been able to do skill set wise 
is a, is a matter of her getting in the gym working hard and in the weight room working hard. I think the biggest thing that stood out to me was this young woman has put in so much work. She has increased her vertical leap by six inches in two years. If, if, you, if you play the game and somebody's like, I can make you jump six inches higher, what a gift. Don Staley got to be pleased with the progression from Aaliyah Boston, 14th season in Columbia, 351 and 104, 22nd season overall. Of course, USA basketball gold medal coach at the Tokyo Olympics last summer, 10 straight 20 win seasons. And there's that ring that they got as well, the 2017 <laughs> national champions. My favorite stat so far about Coach Staley is that she's the first ever to win a Naismith Player and Coach of the Year. I was like, that's pretty awesome. Shot won't go there for Brittany Davis in South Carolina. Going fast again. Hook this time turned down the three on the wing in South Carolina. This trip will settle into some offense. Cook from the corner, left alone. There's another one, Zaya Cook. What a start in this game for her. This is dynamic. I mean, Zaya Cook, a thousand point score on this squad, so you knew it was coming. She's averaging 11 a game, so she's already given you double figures, but as mentioned, has had a bit of a slump at times, and in her last three, she's really trying to get it going. Good up Alabama. and under. That's a great ball fake. Anaya Russell with the bucket that time for Alabama. That snaps a 10 0 run for South Carolina. Back inside to Boston. Bases up, looking for some help. Down the left side of the lane, and that looked easy for Bree Beal. Let me let me correct myself. Also, it was Jemaya Mingo Young with the bucket for Alabama on the last trip. The number two in the dark jerseys, not the light jerseys. And a travel turnover. Second turnover by Alabama. Christy Curry looks on. Wanted her team to come in and play with confidence tonight. Ninth season as the Alabama head coach. NCAA tournament appearance a year ago. It's easy to get shell-shocked when you're playing this Alabama team. But told us today, Brooke, that her biggest goal tonight was for her team to get better, for her team to grow from this opportunity. And so she was ready for her team to take on the challenge, to show up confident, you know, because a lot of times South Carolina is an intimidating team. You don't want to walk into the game feeling that way. You want to feel like you've got yourself a good shot. And that's why she emphasized you know, attacking offensively first, catching the ball with your hands ready to shoot, jumping off two feet so that you don't beat yourself in the beginning. South Carolina has just shown that they're a more dominant team. Spacing, Zaya Cooks knocking shots down, Aaliyah Boston got them going. Bree Beal's getting into the action, so this is a very deep team to have to deal with. Loose ball grab, put back in by Victoria Saxton. Chance for a three-point play for Saxton here. Well, Saxton shooting 57% from the floor, so when she gets the ball in her hands, she's done a great job of converting. She's got a great wingspan, gets good position, relentless on the offensive glass. South Carolina works so much on their fitness that they're quick to jump to get that second chance at putting the ball back in. Three-point play finished off 17 to four, a 13 point advantage for South Carolina just three and a half minutes into this ball game. So South Carolina starting fast once again on the offensive end, maybe even more impressive what they've done on the defensive end. Last three games against Vanderbilt, Ole Miss, and Florida, a total of 21 first quarter points allowed. All right, you look and you think, wow, there's three times this season they've held a team with three points in a quarter. I mean, that is just locked down, deflating. <laughs> That's hard to come back from. So Bingo Young with the offensive rebound. And then gets the shot to fall as well. She's got four of Alabama's six points inside. Extra pass and a nice finish down low for Bree Beal. Great job. They've got four assists so far on their eight field goals. And meanwhile, and for Alabama, Jemiah Mingo Young, she's been their most consistent option on offense. They really like going to her. That's, what's, that's the price you pay for coming inside, Aaliyah Boston. That's where her timing and footwork really comes into play this year. 
has no reason to bite on the pump fake, keeps her body away. She's not fouling with her chest. I mean, she's become such an efficient shot, block, shot blocker. Hannah Barber from the corner gets a three to go. That gets Alabama back within 10. First points of the game for Barber. Boston, just easy on the finish. You'd yeah, like to see Alabama you know, get back to that aggressive mentality, maybe look for some mid-range shots. You know, free themselves up with a screen on that, after that first guard, and then there's usually a pocket right about there where you can take a shot. Right Megan there. Abrams, baseline drive, rejected. That's back-to-back -back trips with a block for Boston. Cook in the corner, hands it off. Out front, no, too strong on the three that time for Boston. If there is a watch list out there, Aaliyah Boston is on it. National Player of the Year. The wooden top 20 late season finalist. Finalist for the Leslie, uh, Lisa Leslie Center Award. Naismith Defensive Player of the Year. And here's the... Great ball movement by South Carolina. You'd love to see it when it goes from second to third side. And then when they miss, they attack the glass big time. One of their, I mean, what have they done? The last five games, Richard, right? We saw this, but we're like 22 rebounds on the plus 22 margin. That's insane. Offensive rebound, and Leah Boston just flips it up over the rim. Six points for Boston. And it's now 23-9. Allie Craig Cruz into the game for Alabama, number 12. She's got it on the wing, puts it on the deck. Trying to drive all the way in. She went right at Aaliyah Boston and finished with the left hand. Did a great job of finishing underhand. And doing it that way actually makes it the shot much more difficult to block. And she's got good length to her game as well, so Craig Cruz able to get the lay-in. Foul on Cruz. What a women's basketball doubleheader next Thursday night. Number seven, Tennessee hosting Missouri at 6.30 Eastern. And number 14, Georgia. Lady Dogs in Baton Rouge to take on number 15, LSU. That's at the PMAC. Both of these games on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. I love both of those matchups. And for LSU, they also have to get by Ole Miss on the seventh before they play Georgia. Just a treacherous SEC schedule right now for everybody. Alabama trying to get a run out. There's a layup for Davis. Back to a 10-point game. Four points now for Brittany Davis. So good a week and a half ago against Auburn. Had 24 points. One of Alabama's two SEC wins against Auburn this year. But a quiet day on this past Sunday against Missouri. Nothing quiet for South Carolina in this first quarter. Yeah, they're getting diverse scoring. They're able to, to put their bench play in early, which has been a big strong suit for South Carolina these last few games. When you can count on your bench minutes to come in and produce. You're really becoming a, a very all-around all just efficient team and a team that is literally next woman up. That's the goal you want to get to. South Carolina is, is definitely headed in that direction. Boston trying to post inside. Instead, they go high, low, and Boston able to finish. She's got eight points, and that is a new single quarter high in points for South Carolina all season. Well, one thing I like to hear Coach Staley talk about this week was, you know, less dribbling, more passing. And that's what I'm seeing here in the first quarter. Ooh. South Carolina taking advantage defensively, crashing the glass. And on offense, Richard, you see it. The ball is flowing. There's not a lot of wasted dribbles out there. Zaya Cook gets the bucket. She's got 12 in the first quarter. Davis with a deep three for Alabama. The run out, though, for Cook was set up by the block out on the perimeter <laughs> by at least uh, Leah Boston. She's got three in this first quarter. I said she hit her average already. It could be a trip dub kind of night for Miss Boston. Ingredients are there early on. The defense, yeah, you, you just you just can't. You got to step back, restart the offense. If she's anywhere close to you, I'd pass the ball. And at 36 left in the first quarter, previous point total high in any quarter this season for South Carolina 
was 27. Aaliyah Boston, eight points, three rebounds, and I shorted her one. She's actually got four blocks already. Straight on three for Davis. This one halfway down and kicks out. South Carolina runs it down. Rebound for Bree Hall. Great box out by Bree Hall. Free throws coming as Leticia Amihir draws the foul inside. Now goes on Jada Rice and is her second. Brooke, one of the things that, that stands out for South Carolina is how smooth they are in transition. They don't waste a lot of dribbles. You were talking about that a, a, a few minutes ago. Yeah, that's what they've been working on. And one of the things, you know, less dribbling, more passing, reducing turnovers, and they they added a new little wrinkle in their practice plans. Uh, it, you turn the ball over, it's a burpee. Everybody on the team's got to do burpees, so whomever turns the ball over, so, like, you don't want to be the one with four and five turnovers because if you've done a burpee, you know you don't want to do two of them. They're the worst. <laughs> There's not Just a whole saying. lot for – yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with you at all. <laughs> not at all. Hard to find much for Dawn Staley not to be pleased with the way that her team has played, but turnovers right. have been it. 15.2 turnovers per game. They're actually minus two per game in the turnover category. Pretty clean so far tonight. Dawn Staley wanted a foul, did not get it. Not only are they a good team, they're a young team. I mean, they've recruited the top of the game in the, in the high school region, and, and players are saying yes. I mean, it has definitely become the spot to play in if you're one of the top players in the country. And you see the point production, and, and these aren't players that she's promising starting roles to. That's another thing. I love how she keeps it very real about practice time, playing time. You don't know how many minutes your high school 24 points a game is going to translate to Division One and the number one ranked team, by the way. It, it, do, it doesn't work like that. So, you know, everybody comes in with a sense of, I, ha I know I have to fill a role, get better, prove myself before I can start on this team. And one of the crazy things is, I mean, South Carolina, despite the production from a lot of their freshmen, they're without a player that they thought was going to be a contributor this year. That's the freshman guard, Raven Johnson. She was hurt in the second game of the season. She's from Atlanta, number one point guard in the country, and she's out for the year. Yep, working on her ACL, I believe, and knee injury, I should say, and is doing quite well in rehab, even though this is the time where you're doing all the boring things, Richard, like, you know, pointing your toe, flexing your foot. Lifting your leg one inch off the ground, you know, as an athlete, you, you think this is this is demeaning. Like you know, I could do so much more. But you got to do the boring stuff to get back to top shape. Transition three for Alabama. So despite 33 points for South Carolina in this first quarter, Alabama, a bucket away from matching the total number of points scored by the last three South Carolina opponents in the first quarter. That's the sixth foul, though, on the Crimson Tide. And Bree Hall is headed to the free throw line. That one goes on Myra Gordon. Yeah, five points, just three minutes time. She's come in and done her job right away. Good, good box out, a few possessions ago on defense. Bree Hall, the freshman from Dayton, Ohio. First team all state, averaged nearly 26 points per game as a senior. Seven rebounds, three steals. Shot clock off. Game clock winding down. There is another block, but it will be Alabama basketballs after the block. I mean, here was standing on the baseline. So Alabama's got 4.4 seconds to try and get a bucket before the end of this first quarter. Clock winding down into the lane, won't go. And a 17 point lead after 10 minutes in Columbia. What a start for Aaliyah Boston and South Carolina. 
got scoring everywhere for the Gamecocks tonight. They're also controlling the boards, they're blocking shots. This is one of the best starts for the Gamecocks all season. South Carolina impressive out of the gate tonight. Zaya Cook making her 83rd consecutive start. She started every single game she's played at South Carolina. Brooke, I don't know that she has had a better start to a game, though, in her career than the 12 first quarter points tonight. All right, five of five from the floor, two of two from three. She's got 12 points already. The South Carolina team got 20 points in the paint. A lot of them had to do with plays like this, a steal, a bucket, one of the quickest players you're going to see in the women's college game. And great to see her have this breakout game here tonight. For the season, South Carolina is out rebounding its opponents by 18.2 per game. They're plus 11 in the first quarter as you get a look at the numbers for Zaya Cook to start things off tonight for South Carolina. And we were talking in the break, it's not like Alabama played a bad first quarter. They made shots, they shot a good percentage, they got some transition baskets, but South Carolina offensively at a different level. Yeah, I mean, I, I looked at the points of the paint, I mentioned that 20 for South Carolina. They also have eight assists, and they're shooting 70%. I mean, 14 to 20, <laughs> that's going to get you a big lead at any time. And South Carolina's fifth turnover of the ball game. Got one game already in the books on this Thursday in the SEC with Ole Miss going to Missouri and winning earlier this evening, snapping a two-game losing streak for Ole Miss and winning for the first time ever in Columbia. How about what's happening right now in Knoxville? South Carolina and Tennessee tied atop the SEC standings, both 8-1 and one in conference play, but at the end of the third quarter, Florida with an 18-point lead, 59-41 over Tennessee in Knoxville at Thompson Bowling. You said 18. 18 point. My 59-41, Florida. Wow. That's SEC for you. We might have a career night tonight, South Carolina block shots. I mean, at this pace, we're not letting anything by them. That was block number six in the game. Free throws coming here. How about South Carolina? Or excuse me, Alabama. Going into the transfer portal and bringing in impact players and, and really from a lot of different places. Yeah, they've got a bunch, uh, you know, five total on the team, and they only bring back two of their starters. And having to really reintroduce everybody to each other and find that style of play. You know, and then basically they didn't have their full roster except for one day at practice in January. You know, they had some COVID difficulties. So this is a team that's not had a lot of time together. Yet look at what they're able to do. I mean, like you said, shooting nearly 40% from three against South Carolina. So they came in here with a good start. You're just seeing how good South Carolina is. Rare that South Carolina has gotten this deep into the shot clock, down to five, and a good defensive possession there for Alabama. And in transition, kind of a circus shot there. Missed by Mingo Young, got her own rebound. Keeps the possession alive for the Crimson Tide. Alabama runs a, a four-guard offense, so they're a, a bit smaller right, and quicker, and that's what Christy Curry wants to use to their advantage. And Don Staley you know, talked about a 5'9 Alabama guard and, and one of her ladies who's 5'11 and what that mismatch kind of looks like. you got to be able to move to guard a 5'9 quick player who can separate themselves and hit shots. And if Bama can get hot, knock down some threes, they can make this a game quickly. Let me go young. Big time hustle play there to keep the possession alive for Alabama. Barber, now Davis. Find a little space at the free throw line. Barber cut off in the lane, just throws it up and tosses it out of bounds. Shot clock was winding down, had to do something. And so a defensive stop, third turnover of the game for the Crimson Tide. That possession right there is the reason we opened this game, talking to you about their defense. They wore you down. They didn't go for any ball fakes. That was great help side. The team defense was excellent. Then you have, I believe it was Bree Hall, 
who just closed down her player, didn't foul, forced her to take a terrible shot, and the shot clock ran out. It was excellent. Megan Abrams missed one last trip, had another good look there and can't get it to fall. That's two pretty good-looking three-point attempts for Abrams in the last two trips down the floor. Wow. Some Nia Rivers. <laughs> First bucket, and how smooth was that? Um, that? That looked WNBA level, my friend. That was one of the smoothest layups I've seen this year. She glided to that bucket. Davis trying to feed it inside. Turnover on Alabama, their fourth. South Carolina off and running and not able to finish. Got a whistle. Go back to that last one. That's worth another look. Saniya Rivers, the freshman from Wilmington, North Carolina. Oh, we, we got an underhand scoop. She didn't even touch it with the left hand. A little brush screen from Boston. Thank you very much. One four, helping some fours out. Wow, that was nice. Saniya's like, Coach, listen, look what I can do. Put me in a little more. She's like, yeah, play some defense too now. <laughs> Coach Staley, Both boy. Both the floor. You, Right? You're not getting playing time if you don't play defense. defense, 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 defense. Shot clock inside 10. Armour gives it off. Abrams trying to find some space. Finds enough to get it up off the glass with the left hand and a bucket for Megan Abrams. Great switch of direction. And, and, and reading the defense, too, she felt the – the defense lean middle, so she went behind the back to change directions, really minimizing her movements. Got that shot up. It wasn't an easy one. Boston just muscled her way into the lane that time, draws the foul. Let's look again at Megan Abrams. Yeah, just great moves. Zia Cook staying with her all the way, but staying out of fouling her. And Abrams did a good job. That's a tough finish, too. And, I mean, tough. But there's, there's not enough accolades you could speak about for this young lady, what she's gone through. She took an elbow to the mouth in January, needed oral surgery, and has yet to eat solid food. She's also dealt with COVID during this season and is just now you know, trying to get back into the swing of things. But I can't imagine a Division I athlete not able to eat solid food yet, what that must be like for her. Hey, Christy Curry said that today, and I interrupted her. I was like, hold on a second, hold on. Did you say she hasn't eaten solid food since January 1st? He's like, you know, we're really getting her some mashed potatoes. <laughs> the, the blue jello is uh, oh, is a big hit. Man. Oh, Cardoso with the block, adding to the team's total now. Six, wow, 16 blocks before halftime. But, yeah, can you imagine? And meanwhile, she's on a tear. She's playing great. She's had a steal in seven straight, three games and double figures. She's out there doing her thing. So tough. Abrams runs it down, tied up in the backcourt, possession arrow to Alabama. Megan Abrams, an impressive young woman, not just on the basketball court, but off of it as well. He's already graduated, has committed to come back for a fifth year, working on a master's degree in business. Had an internship with Nike, and it went so well that they've already offered her a full-time job when she's ready to take it. Abrams missed it, grabbed it, and this time the arrow will give it to South Carolina. Yeah, that's, it. that's incredible. Finance degree, economics degree, going for a master's in business management. Created Project ID with Jada Rice. It's all about creating safe spaces for students who identify with or are allies with minority groups. I mean, she, she's what everything that you hope your student athlete is. Austin on the wing. A little high-low action there, but not from the free throw line. And Cardozo there to finish it. South Carolina team continuing their hot shooting, 16 to 25, and 64 percent. Already grabbing 24 points in the paint. Here's another one. A block for Boston. She's got five blocks. She also has three assists in the game. Left alone, top of the key, decided not to take the three. Feeds it down low to Cardozo, and she's fouled before the shot. And that is going to take us to a timeout. Foul goes on Jada Rice. We will be back. Well, you made a great point that it, over the break. You said, wait a minute now. 
uh, two teams that had 19 and 36 in the first quarter were at a combined eight points in the second. It was 36-19 after 10 minutes. And we have a combined eight points. South Carolina, no, now 10. South Carolina has outscored Alabama 7-3 in the second quarter so far. And that's also what I love about quarters, because every quarter is its own game. So although you have a season high and then you're struggling just to put the ball in the basket, you made a great point. South Carolina was able to rest a lot of their starters, so we're seeing the bench get some quality minutes early in this game. And one point lead for the Gamecocks. Brittany Davis off the mark, rebound underneath for Cardozo. Alabama doing what they can to really keep defenders low. They talked about double teaming, bluffing, fat, you know, showing the double team, doing everything they could to try to keep the ball out of the paint. They knew that was going to be the danger zone. Drive and kick, three won't go. Is there less movement that time, that trip down the floor for South Carolina? It's stuck sure in their spots so. a little? Yeah, yeah, sure seems so. And I think that was just a different look also defensively from Alabama. So perhaps they're just working the ball, trying to get the best shot. But yeah, in a zone, it's not just about moving the ball. You've got to move yourself, too, at times. Houston Curry's team trailing by 21, three and a half left until the break. That's tipped away off the inbound, and Abrams fortunate to get it back. Alabama fortunate to keep the possession. Abrams into the lane, and there's another block. Cardozo got that one. Euro step for the finish down low for Sanaya Rivers. Oh, she, she bringing out all the tricks in the bag. That's twice. To stay on this floor. First we get a, a super underhand scoop, and now the Euro. All right, Sanaya. Travel and a turnover. Alabama. Start on the defensive end. Cardoso with the eighth block of the night. Oh, and the finish with the left. My goodness. Yeah, that, that was impressive there. That was like a quick Euro step, so didn't even have to glide. And she's got, she's definitely got the length to do it at 6 1. That was an impressive, impressive move. Sanaya Rivers, as heralded as any player on this South Carolina roster coming out of high school. National Player of the Year a season ago. She was the three-time North Carolina High School Player of the Year. Won that award in 2019, 2020, and 2021. Feed inside. Boston can't finish. Gets her own miss. And then is fouled. And has free throws coming up. Second foul on Megan Abrams. I beg your pardon, that was Mingo Young, Jemiah Mingo Young picking up her first foul. So Leah Boston at the free throw line. Friday night, our gymnastics doubleheader starts with number four, Florida in Columbia taking on Missouri. That's at 7 Eastern. Then a tri-meet between Number 25, North Carolina. Number 17, Western Michigan. Number 9, Alabama. That's at 8.30 Eastern. Coming up on Friday night. SEC Network and the ESPN app. Gymnastics fills the stance. They do a great job. That's what an exciting sport. It's a little bit different type of athleticism than we are seeing right now, but it is incredible to watch those women and their ability to soar. Mm -hmm. That balance beam scares me. Or, or not balance oh, beam, yeah. the beam scares the me to beam. death. <laughs> what a love of offensive right rebounds and Boston finishes it. These minutes, you've got a blend. You've got a great blend here of some starters. So you've got Leah Boston and, and Sanaya Rivers able to be on the floor at the same time. So she's getting real time, real game experience learning from Boston and how to be better. Cardoso also on the floor, Zaya Pick on the floor. That's some 
been the benefit of Destiny Littleton. So South Carolina with the benefit of being able to interchange matchups and lineups. This is them again pounding the glass. <laughs> Leah Boston, you can put four people by her. That's fine. She's still going to go get that rebound. Stat line tonight for Aaliyah Boston, 13 points, seven rebounds, three assists, five blocks in 16 minutes. Woo. Brittany Davis with first free throw there. I think we can definitely give a shout out to Molly Vanetti, who's the strength and conditioning coach for South Carolina and the job that she's done. Uh, she uses a, such an individual type of plan for each athlete, you know, caters to what their goals are and, and makes measurable, measurable actions to take to get there. And Leah Boston, who's just improved in, in every kind of way, jumping six inches higher is the one that really stood out to me. South Carolina with a 25-point lead, closing in on a minute left in the first half. Richard Cross, Brooke Weisbrod with you. South Carolina, number one team in the country, one loss in SEC play. It came in their SEC opener on the road against Missouri, a one-point loss, eight straight wins since. Ooh! Mm. <laughs> Zaya Cook. It's Euro night in Columbia. Cook with their head up, holding the defender off. Last minute Euro. Wow, getting by Craig Cruz. And finishing left. We've seen two tough left finishes. A couple of fouls now on Allie Craig Cruz. Free throw here for Zaya Cook. Trying to get to 15 for the game. Can't get the free throw to go. Touched last, though. Two Alabama players. Neither can secure it. South Carolina gets a bonus possession. Slow start in this second quarter. South Carolina has put 15 more on the board. 51 first half points for the Gamecocks. And trying to add to it before the halftime break. Tough angle won't go. Cardozo with the grab and the finish. And it's 53 24. Tweak that, make that a little assist now. What do you think? <laughs> it looks like a shot and an assist. You need the home scorekeeper to help you out there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully that's a subjective one. Well, I like the look by Russell's ball fake one dribble. Power to the baseline. That's a nice attempt at a dish, but you, she's got to be more open than that, and that's where these minutes will come in handy. you got to trust yourself a little more. Littleton gives it off. Shot won't go. Tipped up. Follow won't go. South Carolina will take a 29-point lead into the locker room. A big first half, 53 points, the most in a half this season for number one South Carolina. Let's send you to the studio, Alyssa Lang and Steffi Sorensen. Alyssa? Time to get started for the second half. Richard Cross, Brooke Weisbrod, and Brooke, I don't know, hard to be anything but impressed with South Carolina, and they did it on both ends of the floor. Exactly. You have a season high in points in the first half, but really, look at the defense. You held Alabama to just five points in the second quarter. You have nine team blocks. I mean, and they're not just coming, you know, from one or two people. Everybody's getting in on the action for South Carolina. Then you have a breakout game for Zaya Cook, who's just gone through some slumps, but not tonight. Six of seven, 14 points, and I think you mentioned what, she had the first 10 points for South Carolina and just has done some incredible moves tonight to open up the offense and really get them going from the get-go. 14 points for Cook. Leah Boston filling up the stat line with 13 points, seven boards, and five block shots. Nine blocked shots for South Carolina as a team, and you see the advantage, plus 24 in the paint for South Carolina in the first half. So Alabama trying to get something good happening early to start the second half, and that is a good start for the Crimson Tide. Brittany Davis was a, uh, a good 
uh, had a good first half. Had 12 points in the first half, up to 14 now in the game for the Crimson Tide. You know, I just looked at the number of field goals. It, it doesn't feel like Brittany Davis has taken 11 shots tonight because uh, in that last possession there, she really hunted for her shot and took it. So I was going to say she should shoot, you know, some more, but 11 is pretty decent. It's just been difficult to find any, anything open, but 5 of 11 versus South Carolina is pretty good. Abrams working to the free throw line, kicks it out. Pull up from the elbow, too strong that time for Mingo Young, and now South Carolina quickly the other way. Cook feeds it inside to Boston. That was the first possession of the game. A little more resistance that time from Alabama defensively, but free throws coming for Aaliyah Boston. This is what we talked about at the top. What do we watch for? Hannah Barber, well, made a three in the first half, so it's now 32 straight games with a made three-pointer for Alabama's Hannah Barber and Aaliyah Boston. How about that stat line from the first half? She was a monster, and she's <laughs> tried to add to the point total now at the free throw line. That's right. Well, how about whoop, whoop? She's on triple-double alert right now. Let's let's get the Twitterverse going. Because it could happen. We got a lot of time. This It could happen, honestly, before the fourth quarter at the pace she's playing at tonight. So you're, you're calling for five third-quarter blocks from Aaliyah Boston. Well, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if she did it. I'll put it that way. Aaliyah Boston, 20 of 22 games now this season in double figures. Continues to climb the all-time scoring ranks in South Carolina. Cut down the lane, but cut off there. There's nowhere to go that time for Mingo Young once she got down to the rim. Shot clock down to two. Tough shot, won't go. There's a rebound for Boston. Well, she didn't make contact, so... Technically, you can't count that one, but that was a, a, as good as a block. I mean, she completely forced Alabama into changing the, the way that they shot the ball. It's hesitation from Barber to get it up off the glass and get the layup. Hannah Barber, a another good. tough player for this squad. Christy Curry talks about how she's she compares her to Dynamite. She says she's the epitome of a point guard. Using small packages. It's another hustle play right there. Good job by Sexton. Victoria Saxton digging it out and then just able to flip it up to Aaliyah Boston and gets the bucket to go now. 17 points on six of nine shooting. And travel. Barber shuffled her feet. So, so Brooke, big picture, when you think about national player of the year, SEC player of the year, obviously Aaliyah Boston is in the conversation. Is it a runaway yeah. in your mind for her or, or not? I believe, I, I mean, I believe if we took if we took votes at today, uh, yes. To me, I, I mean, I, I would think it would be a unanimous selection, the you know, best player on the best team in the country, averaging, you know, dang near double-double. Double -double. And just, you know, do, and doing nights like this where she could end up with a triple-double. Her impact on the game, I, I don't know if there's anybody else that has the impact on the game that she has on, on both levels. So, to me, yes, it's a clear cut. She's a national player of the year. 27 point lead for South Carolina. They led it by 29 at the half. Back Cook feeding it into Boston. Doubled immediately. So, a little bit of an adjustment there for Alabama. The ball movement, though, and a triple for Henderson. 132nd career three-pointer. She's closing in on number nine on the all-time list in South Carolina. I mean, she was 41%. Also mm. somebody that you can't leave open. It doesn't take a majority of the shots on the scouting report. Saxton. Too easy that time. Five points now for Victoria Saxton. And Saxton, with, with her length, and now, okay. a bill, what were you about to say, a wingspan? No, well, I wasn't going wingspan. I was just going to go back to, you were talking about athleticism and the work in the strength program. She's got a 30-inch vertical, 30.3-inch <laughs> vertical. 
for Victoria she Saxton. Cut, yeah, she can reach over 10 feet high. I mean, technically, she, she could probably dunk a tennis ball at least. Those long arms, defense, then she can lead the fast break, finish the contact here. I mean, Saxton has become a, a vital role to this team. It's, what, what also impresses me about her is that it's her third season as captain. Yeah. She's kind of the one that she takes care of everybody in the team. She's like, this is what we're wearing on the bus. You got to be here. We're doing this. The, the staff of South Carolina SID, Diana Kamala, told us. And, and, you know, you can see it in the way she plays. She's very composed. And, and Brooke, when I, I think it really underscores what you're talking about when you say third year as captain, but this is only her second year as a starter. Last year was kind of the breakout mm -hmm. season for her, the 2021 season where she emerged into the starting line. She started every game. She was one of the captain when she was coming off the bench, and that really speaks to kind of the leadership skills there. Yeah, it definitely does. Somebody's got a, a great voice from the bench when they're you know, they're not even in the game, and, and that's – that's such a growth moment. It's something other players can learn from. Talking about Victoria, or Victoria Saxton, the native of Rome, Georgia. Greg Cruz into the lane, cut off. Barber with the three. Side. This time Boston can't finish, but has free throws coming. Allie Craig Cruz with the foul. That is her third. She's had her hands full dealing with the Leah Boston when she's been in the ball game. Boston five of six from the free throw line. What a women's basketball doubleheader we've got for you next Thursday night. Missouri and Tennessee, that's at 6.30 Eastern in Knoxville. Vols ranked seventh in the country. Then it's a top 15 matchup. Georgia and LSU in Baton Rouge. That is at 8.30 Eastern. Both games on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Well, how about the job Kayla Pointer has Ooh. done at LSU? I mean, I love the 19 points, but the five assists – that's what is sticking out to me. And, and LSU just coming in guns a blazing this year, as we knew they would. Has made moves nationally in the SEC, everything. But yeah, Kayla's got a nice game. Alabama's got Taylor Sutton in the ball game for the first time tonight, number four. Another block. That is six now for Aaliyah Boston. Can she get to that triple-double? We'll keep watching and we'll keep you informed. Leah Boston doing it again on the defensive end. That is six blocks in the game tonight. Richard Crossbrook Weisbrod with you from South Carolina and Alabama tonight. How's she doing it? What what, what has been? I mean, we know she's been talented since she stepped on campus, Brooke. But why the growth mm -hmm. year over year? Consistent hard work and getting in the film room and and giving yourself experiences, you know, outside of the South Carolina program, you know, USA basketball, and just really committing, you know, to getting better. And Aaliyah Boston, you know, I remember talking to her as going in as a freshman, you know, McDonald's All American, and, and you could just see the the light in her eyes to play for Don Staley at, at South Carolina. It was there, and I remember hearing from Don Staley about how much better Asia Wilson got after she really started watching film and committing to that. And Aaliyah Boston is, is there. She loves film. Ty Cook left that one short. Alabama may be looking for a transition bucket. Daniel leading the break that time. Now they'll settle into a half-court set. And go Young. Craig Cruz. Everything but the finish on that possession. That was a good look. Yeah, Alabama ended up getting a possibility at a layup. It led to a South Carolina transition bucket. And, you know, South Carolina, they're able to switch on defense. Even if Destiny Henderson takes on a, a larger defender as she did and uh, Craig Cruz. But their help side is so good. Their communication is so good. They can adjust and get back to it. 
Craig Cruz kicks it out. On the drive in traffic this time, Taylor Sutton able to get it to fall. First points of the game for Taylor Sutton. Senior from Atlanta, transferred to Alabama from Middle Tennessee. That's 5-4, going inside, going up against Aaliyah Boston. Give her a lot of credit. That tells you the strength of Boston. Craig Cruz wants the call, not going to get that. That's just dominating the paint. 20 points, nine rebounds, six blocks, no fouls on Aaliyah Boston in this game. but then has it stripped away. I assume that'll be counted as a rebound. Open from the corner, three. Good look there. That is a rebound, so now a double-double for Leah Boston. And Alabama back into double digits now. They've scored 12 points in this quarter, and South Carolina only at 14, so... Leah Boston now owning the school record and, and hunting for that triple double tonight. Don't look, don't forget about those six blocks over there. That's that is just incredible, consistent hard work. And and what I, and what I love too is that she does it against ranked opponents. You know, she averages 17 and 12 in three blocks against ranked opponents. So this is not her doing this on nights where she's not challenged. It's high quality SEC teams, and she's still getting the job done. And, you know, will we see any more of Aaliyah Boston tonight? We'll have to wait and see. Dawn Staley maybe plays her a little bit more in the yeah. fourth quarter, perhaps. 2.21 left in the third. Obviously, South Carolina very much in control in this game. Four fouls now on Allie Craig Cruz and 34-point lead for the Gamecocks. You know, Christy Curry talked to us about wanting her team to come into this game, not be afraid of the moment, not be afraid of the idea of playing South Carolina, to learn from th something and to try and get better. It was a buzzsaw in the first quarter, Brooke, but Alabama has done some good things, but mm -hmm. South Carolina's kind of turned it up a notch defensively after that first 10 minutes. I mean, I like Alabama's energy and effort. You know, I don't think they're backing down. But you're just you're running into the best defensive team right now in the country, Cardosa. I mean, between her and Aaliyah Boston, it, it's an absolute nightmare to try to go inside. And 11 Alabama team blocks now. Yeah, it, it, you know, in Alabama, they're still attacking, right? They're still in that attack mindset, and I like that. But at the same time, you got to you got to pick and choose your shots. You can't go in body to body against Boston and Cardosa. You just can't. Cardozo's had a big night as well. She's got six points, eight rebounds, and four blocks. Another great move from Sanai River. She has shown such a wide range of skill sets tonight. I imagine we won't see more of her on the floor pretty soon. She's definitely done a great job. Barber left alone and knocks out the three from the top of the key. South Carolina, we talked about this earlier. The month of January, they gave up 49.9 points per game. That was against three ranked teams, and five of their last six opponents shot under 30% for the game. That's what this team has been doing defensively. And tonight, they've had an impressive offensive piece as well. Yeah, for a team that averages you know, in the 70s to be there already in the third quarter, just, just shows you, you know, the strength of South Carolina. Got a deep bench now. Everybody's contributing. And the, the length that Taya Cook had tonight as well as Boston. That's a hard take.
23 and a half seconds left in the third quarter. And free throws here for Jemiah Mingo Young. Mingo Young averaging 11 points per game, 73% free throw shooter. Makes the first to get to eight on the night. Alabama showing the full court pressure, a little 2-2-1. Two, two, South Carolina will hold for the last shot. Rivers dumps it down low. Cardozo with the bucket. What a feed by Rivers. What a game she's had. And South oh, Carolina will carry. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> that was impressive. Just seeing all kinds of inspirational play tonight, but who inspires Bria Beal for Black History Always? Find out next after the break. Bria Beal, excuse me. A person that is a part of Black History that inspires me is someone I see on a daily basis, which is Coach Staley. She continues to show me that she will speak up for what she feels is right and what is on her heart, and she will leave nothing left behind. For more stories like that from Bree Beal, you can stream Black History always on ESPN+. Plus. Richard Cross, Brooke Weisbrod with you. Bree Beal talking about how she looks up to her head coach, Dawn Staley, who is so incredibly accomplished. And, and the, it, you, you mentioned this earlier, Brooke. First as a player and now as a coach. And if there's a Hall of Fame, she's in it. <laughs> Exactly, and, and I think not only that, Don Staley is, she's just so willing to communicate and, and set up expectations so that there's there's no mismanagement in the locker room. Everybody knows where they're at, they know where they stand. And one thing that is just amazing, I've never heard of another coach doing this, but she conducts a monthly Zoom with parents. Uh, so every month, you know, you're having this kind of family meeting, right? And, and so again, there's, areas to air out questions or grievances and so you you don't have the the distractions a lot of times that come along with the drama of playing time and who gets what that's all taken care of so that they can just focus on winning when so many of these young women are used to being the star on their team we're talking you know half a dozen top 50 players nationally who may have been the leading scorer in their high school's history or may have been the player of the year and now they're playing eight minutes a game or 11 minutes a game and coming off the bench and want more minutes but it, you look at it the, the process has worked and she has gotten everyone to buy in she sure has her, you know, her program is, is now set We've accomplished the highest honor you can get in the 2017 National Championship, they've gone to three Final Fours, eight players now to the WNBA. So this has become a place to develop your game, get better, become a top draft pick, and compete for a national championship every year. Three will go, but grabbed underneath and put back by Lee Lee Grissett. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, you've got Grissett, who is a graduate already. 25 points off the bench tonight for South Carolina. Grissett brings great defensive energy off the bench, too. Mm. Feed inside and a turnover. Friday night, our gymnastics doubleheader starts with number four, Florida, in Columbia, taking on number seven, Missouri. Then three ranked teams in Tuscaloosa. Number 25, North Carolina. Number 17, Western Michigan. Number nine, Alabama. First try meet of the season for the Crimson Tide. All of that coming your way on Friday, SEC Network, and streaming on the app. Cardoso. To under set. Now a floater and an offensive foul. Not easy to take a 
not easy to take a, a charge in a zone, but that was a great job by Alabama to, to grab that. And, and now offensively, you're seeing South Carolina move a lot more you know, in the zone. It's not just pass and stand there. It's, it's pass and move and cut and get yourself open. So, you know, a point that you had made earlier about did that possession feel a little bit lifeless? Yes, it was because you see the difference in comparison. They got called for the charge, but it was a drive and shot attempt. Another foul on Bree Hall, so she picks up two in a hurry. How about South Carolina defensively? Tonight, they held Alabama to five points in the second quarter. The season low was Florida scoring three in that first quarter last week. Blocks, 12 of them in the game, better than the season average, and <laughs> rebounding margin pretty impressive again as well. Yeah, I really don't know where you're going to pick apart this film and find the find the things to criticize or, you know, the work on, let's do better. Uh, it's It's been a pretty stellar performance. Seven fouls on South Carolina as a team. There's a teaching Just moment seven. right there. <laughs> she, she pointed out what, like, probably, you know, jump off, jump off two feet or get your feet set. And again, we mentioned it earlier, really the only thing that South Carolina has had an issue with at times this year is turning the basketball over. They're averaging 15 turnovers a game. Ten in tonight's game. Here the game cuts. There's another one. That's number 11. So that one we're going to put on you for the for the broadcaster jinx. Maybe if you know free throw line, we'll say turnovers. <laughs> uh, they, got, look, the so I've got to wear that off. one. Yeah, I got to wear that. One. Paying off now. Only 11 tonight. If they can keep it below their season average, you're making moves. Hezzy. Offensive rebound, open look for three, won't go. It's another rebound for Cardoza. Cardoza now with nine rebounds. And a big bucket there on the other end. Three ball for South Carolina and a timeout. 6.17 left in the fourth quarter. March Madness all gets started on the 16th of March. So what about the SEC and projected seeds from Charlie Cream and Bracketology? South Carolina, I know you're shocked, a number one seed. Tennessee goes down tonight, right now projected as a two. You got LSU and Georgia as a four and a five. Both Arkansas and Ole Miss checking in at sevens. Missouri at an eight. And then Florida at an 11. And Florida, boy, did they improve their resume tonight, Brooke, with that win by 25 in Gainesville over Tennessee. Yeah, I mean, that was that's a that's a head turner to hear about that score. You know, especially when you think about you know how strong Tennessee has been playing. But I think you're you know obviously looking at Florida moving up the ranks, seeding. Ole Miss continues to get better as the season goes on. Nobody wants to play them. And you've just got LSU who has just become a powerhouse again. Georgia doing their thing. The SEC is loaded. Foul there on Lily Reset. That is her second. I don't know if you heard it or not at the end of the uh, Ole Miss Missouri game. Eric and Tamika were talking about it was going to be interesting to see how Ole Miss responded. They were in the top 25 last week for the first time in 15 years. And then they lost twice. They lost to South Carolina. They lost to Georgia. <laughs> Bounced back in a big way tonight with that win on the road against, uh, against Missouri. You see the final from Gainesville, 84-59. Florida, a bubble team, uh, but right now on the right side of the bubble, according to Charlie Cream, with a big win. And a close one in, uh, in Athens, six-point game with Georgia and Vanderbilt. And Shakira Austin, what she's done at that program, it, she always had raw talent and skill, but now she's just seeing that with her confidence playing through the roof. And what, what Coach Yo, Milana McPhee, has done there has really changed the culture of that program. She said they're finally starting to buy into it now. You know, my, my positivity is wearing off on my team. We're confident. We believe in each other. We're playing well, playing hard. But, yeah, there's, there's different energy once you enter that top 25 now. <laughs> People are like, oh, 
now we know about you, right? It, you, you can't sneak up on anybody anymore. Mississippi State and Auburn. That's the late game tonight. Or one of the late games tonight. And Arkansas and Texas A&M coming up after us here on the SEC Network. Mississippi State, a, a team that has had all kinds of adversity throughout the course yes. of the year with departures and health and safety protocol issues and coaching change. And Doug Novak's done a nice job kind of rallying that team. They're playing well. 81-45 South Carolina on to its ninth SEC win. Preseason first team all SEC, first team all American and the preseason national player of the year, Aaliyah Boston. And watching her play tonight, you know why. She was picked for all of those awards. She was, Brooke Weisbrod, outstanding. In tune from the tip of this ball game, passing was on point. She got great positioning to catch the first uh, possession of the game. And it's just focus. You know, her, her footwork is phenomenal this year. And now has 15 consecutive double-doubles chasing down Sylvia Fowles, the great Sylvia Fowles Ooh, at LSU. I mean, yeah, now you're getting into a whole different level of conversation now. One of the greatest players in the college game in the WNBA ever. And your numbers are getting close to matching that. What does that say about you know, the potential of your future, what that could look like? Just nothing even easy for Alabama, but a nice work, a nice move there by Allie Craig Cruz. Get two on the board. Four for her. Not bad. 20 points, 10 boards, six blocks. Efficient. Got to the free throw line and was good there as well. And it certainly looks like Boston's night is done. Six of eight from the free throw line to go along with that 7-11 from the field. The team still shooting over 50% in this game. 56% in fact, almost 40% from behind the line. Meanwhile, Alabama not quite at 30%. Again, another defensive nightmare. The, the 52 points in the paint is just incredible. That's a huge number. Uh, rebounds, 42 to 28. So once again, just owning the glass. If, and it's a big if. There's plenty of work still to do. But if Aaliyah Boston were to tie Sylvia Fowles with 19 straight double-doubles, this is who she would have to do it against. Alabama, Kentucky on the road, Georgia on the road, and then Auburn. And if she were to get to that mark, of tying Sylvia Fowles 19 straight double-doubles, she would have a chance to set the all-time SEC record against the Tennessee Vols at home on Ooh. February 20th. Oh, the, now that's I know that's a, I know that's a Ooh. lot of if, I understand. Ooh. That's exciting, though. I, I, I like that seed you just planted. And their schedule is going to be rough, tough to do it. But, I mean, look, we've already said she's, she's put up the numbers. All nights you face ranked teams. So, uh, she rises to the challenge. Yeah, so that Kentucky. Tennessee game, that's one I have on my calendar. I'm like, oh, I can't wait for this one. Kentucky and then Georgia and then Auburn and then Tennessee for a chance to tie Sylvia Fowles with 19 straight double doubles in the SEC. That is rare air oh. indeed. Mm -hmm. Three and a half to play. South Carolina leading at 81-47. Where does Alabama go from here after a game like this? Well, I think you you know you take a look at did we give our best effort, and and I think Alabama did what they came in to do, which was you know, play with a sense of confidence. They played hard. They didn't take bad shots. They took tough shots, tough contested shots. But there wasn't a lot of room to, to create. I mean, this is just a night where South Carolina dominated. I think Alabama can say, hey, we came in here and played hard. Big one on Sunday against Vanderbilt for this Alabama team. Then it's Kentucky for seven, Tennessee, then Texas A&M, 
LSU. So a couple of top 15 opponents in the next five games. But no South Carolina. No Georgia in these next five. And again, this is a team that has not had the consistency of practicing with their starters all, all but one time in January. It, that itself is... I mean, you're, what you're putting together and putting out there against number one team in the country is a team that has less than basically five practices put together for the starters. That's, that's pretty intense. Allie like Craig Cruz has had a nice game tonight. Six points for her. Saw the graduate patch there on her chest. Killeen, Alabama, Lauderdale High School. Made one career start as a freshman. She has played extended minutes tonight for Alabama. Over there by the Gamecocks. Some Tide will head the other way. 2.40 to play. 13 yeah, turnovers I agree. Craig now Cruz. for South Carolina. 13 burpees. Ready for practice Ooh. tonight. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if they have to start off with those. Ooh. But I think you're right about Craig Cruz. You know, I, I like how she can handle and shoot. She's pretty agile. She defensively there's a charge late in the game. That'll make Coach Staley happy. Tonight, after Arkansas and Texas A&M, the SEC Now team will have a complete breakdown of games as well as interviews with players and coaches. That starts at 11 Eastern. It's right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Whistle and a foul away from the ball. It will go on Destiny Littleton, I believe. Littleton. It's uh, Sanaya Fagan who picks up the foul. Yeah, Daniel on the drive. Pumped it off, and it's Myra Gordon with the bucket down low. 30-point lead for South Carolina. Littleton will walk it up. Davis tonight, her night's done. She had a great game, though. 20 points off a of 7 to 16 shooting, put in 33 minutes of the night. Nobody else for Bama was able to reach double figures. Three off the mark and touch last by South Carolina. Gamecocks, different look on the floor with Thompson, Russell, Littleton, Fagan, and Wasilek. about what Don Staley looks at and was okay this is where my team's got to get better turnovers yeah uh, okay not a lot of weaknesses here but when you look at South Carolina and you think in terms of making a deep run getting to the final four perhaps winning a national championship where have they got to get better than they are right now you know I like the improvement I've seen tonight in in less dribbling more ball movement and more movement without the ball uh, and the fact that the bench is getting so many minutes. Great second effort here to close the game out. Destiny Littleton's done a terrific job of taking a charge and getting that steal. But becoming more efficient on offense. I mean, an even better oiled machine here. Keep the ball moving. Don't waste dribbles. Take good shots. But the way they're playing right now, I don't know who's going to come close. Inside, free throws coming as Sanaya Fagan draws the foul. Kyla Wade Warren calling for the foul for Alabama. This will be another final in just a matter of moments. You've got Georgia and Vanderbilt in a six-point game in Athens, Mississippi State at Auburn tonight. Nightcap here on the SEC Network, Arkansas and Texas A&M. They'll tip things off in College Station at 8 o'clock. And despite some ice and maybe rough weather in the Texas area, the announcement came earlier today that they were playing. And if you were coming to the ballgame, just, just be careful. We want you here. 
but be careful. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 affected 100 million people, which is pretty pretty incredible. So any games that went on were great before. And just a huge some statement you could say from South Carolina at home, getting better as the season goes on. Story tonight for South Carolina, Leah Boston, 20 points, 10 rebounds, six blocks as well. Give me a final thought, Brooke. Just a complete dominating effort for South Carolina. Aaliyah Boston showing why she is the undisputed national player of the year. Thanks for being with us on this Thursday night. South Carolina now 21-1 overall, 9-1 in the SEC. That does it for my partner, Brooke Weisbrod, and our entire crew. I'm Richard Cross. Let's send you to the studio, Alyssa Lang, Andy Landers, and Steffi Sorensen.